There's nothing quite like pumpkin soup. It has a rich, warm flavor, which makes it perfect for the first course during Thanksgiving. Cooking instructor Heidi Lang is back to share a recipe that is not only delicious, but healthy, too. Heidi, this is starting to smell delicious. Well, the first thing we did is we got these uh, shallots and these onions going, and okay. they're nice and glassy, as you can see, and that's what we want. So that's going to take about five to seven minutes. Okay. So, uh, Teresa, I'm going to just put this a little higher now that they're done. Put those potatoes in. They're going in with the onions They're going here? in. They're sliced thin. There's two potatoes. And the reason for that is that that will thicken. Put the salt and pepper in. Sure. That will thicken the sauce without adding more cream than we need to. Oh, because good. we are keeping it healthy. Yeah, then. we are. And we should mention, pumpkin really does have a lot of health benefits. Wow, pumpkin is one of those perfect foods. It's low in fat, mm -hmm. high in fiber. It has anti-inflammatory qualities, anti-aging qualities, good for our skin. I can rub it all yeah. over my face. <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> or eat it and hope for the best. Okay. Um, also, it um, um, uh, lowers the chances of getting tumors. So there are a lot of good reasons to eat it, but a lot of people don't. Because it doesn't have a whole lot of taste in its raw form. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why it's great to learn how to make things like soup. So we're going to be using a puree for this. And uh, as we were speaking earlier, if you want to make your own puree, you can boil it or roast it. There are lots of things you can do uh, to, to get the puree in this form and then uh, puree it in a blender. Okay. But it isn't a bad idea to buy some good organic puree in a can. I'd rather you make the soup mm -hmm. than not, uh, than go buy it um, um, over the counter. So once these are done, another minute or so, we're just trying to get these a little bit warm. Okay. Uh, Teresa, oh, we're nice. going to add, let's just put this a little higher. Sure. We're going to add this, let me just do this right now. Okay. We're going to add this. And then give us a good stir. Sure. Now this is the, the broth. This is the broth, the okay. chicken broth. If you are vegetarian and you'd like to use uh, vegetable broth, not a problem at all. Okay. It will have a different flavor, but also superb. Still good. Superb. Okay. Now after this boils for about 15 minutes, okay. uh, we're going to let it go to a boil. Um, we would uh, then put in the ginger, the cinnamon, and a little cayenne. If you don't like spicy food. You gives can eliminate it. Kick, it. Huh? Gives it a little kick. We'd add a little more salt, and then we're going to add these pears. And the reason for that, Ooh. yeah, a pear, uh, a pumpkin needs some kind of sweetness to it. So instead of using a lot of sugar, mm -hmm. I thought it was much better to use pears. I like that so idea. So this is a really healthy soup. And then in the end, we're going to add some creme fraiche. Creme fraiche is um, not quite as sour as sour cream, but if you want to use sour cream, that's okay too. If you want to eliminate this and have like the healthiest soup ever. Uh, um, you it's never gonna yeah, hurt and you anyone. know there's eight ounces in here. This soup serves eight to ten. I highly recommend it. Okay. okay? So after the soup is done, uh, this boils. Mm -hmm. We add the peppers. I mean, excuse me, the pears and the ginger. Ginger is key. How did you get the ginger like this? Ah, okay. So we have uh, this immersion blender that also comes with a chopper. Oh. And we just put in a little chopper, and it just goes. Zzz, and before you know it, we Easy. have this ginger. Okay. If you don't have that and you want to use powdered ginger, dry ginger, by all means. So, voila. This is what the soup will look like, Ooh. this gorgeous, gorgeous fall color. And I thought it'd be nice to show everybody how to use an immersion blender. If you don't have an immersion blender, I always tell my students it's one of the best tools in a kitchen. It doesn't get messy. I feel like it might go. It doesn't. I'll show you. <laughs> Uh, Maybe just when I'm doing it. So you want one that has two powers, low and high. Okay. And you would, all of this stuff would still be kind of solid, right? This is already smooth. And we would just <laughs> make this sound. But as you can see, I'll stop talking for a second. <laughs> Especially if you have a deep pan, it won't splash. Sure. And what's great about this is if you use a food processor, now you've got six other tools that are, already dirty, that are right? dirty and all these pieces and parts. So I like using this because it saves me a lot of time. Easy cleanup. Yeah, and we don't want to spend more time in the kitchen. We want to spend time with our guests. That's true. Let's talk about Thanksgiving. Yes. Uh, how do you prepare for this? It seems like it would be overwhelming. I've never cooked a Thanksgiving mm. dinner. You know, even for me, and I'm having 23 people over, it is, wow. can be overwhelming. <laughs> so the key is to plan ahead. Okay. Uh, so think about make your lists, make your grocery lists, your decorating lists, and all of those things. And then the most important thing after you have your lists mm -hmm. is to think about what you don't want to do. And you could designate them. Oh right? yeah, delegate, delegate, delegate. Don't be proud. If someone says, "What can I bring?" Say, "Dessert, there you appetizer, go. whatever." So that, that is key. And then the next thing that's really key mm -hmm. is to make sure that you um, start making things a day or two ahead. Okay. So half of what we have on Thursday will be actually made Tuesday and Wednesday. So that the morning of showtime is really about the turkey. You're just putting that turkey in the oven, yeah, right? Yeah, and everything is already decorated and everything ready. Well, oh, all you really the things. could do the table at any point, right? Because um, not everyone sits at the dining room table. We're doing it today, as a you matter are. of fact, yeah. <laughs> That's after, fun, though. Do you yeah, do table evening, seatings? Uh, we do little table 
students. Yeah. We have all kinds of little baskets and cute things. Look through magazines. Pinterest now, of course, is great totally for ideas. Time, yes. So always plan ahead. And, um, and then make sure, mm -hmm. once the, the day comes, that you have a nice glass of white wine and you <laughs> enjoy the day. I because think that's important. The chef it really needs to is. It is. So much myself. of the time, it's like a wedding. The bride missed the whole thing. So we don't want that to happen. That's so good. when once our guests arrived, last Thanksgiving was probably the best we ever had. People came in and said, Heidi, are we going out to dinner? Because oh, really? Every, yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> it was incredible. That's fantastic. Uh, and you so, enjoyed yourself, and, bottom uh, line. And, yeah, and the only thing that was really still had to be done was the turkey. Well, good advice, so, Heidi. We'll have yeah. this pumpkin soup recipe over in WTNH.com, but we're going to taste it at the end of the show we also. We certainly are. All right. Thanks for being here. Oh, a pleasure. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Coming up next, you know her and love her on The Chew. Recently, I talked to Carla Hall about her new cookbook. We'll share that interview after the break. Don't go anywhere.